Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 31 Days of Pompoween. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're not new here, you've heard this a million times, and so I apologize. But this month, I am doing 31 days of Halloween, so I'm releasing one video a day during the month of October. Today, I'm doing something really special. It is yet another art recreation. I love to do them. You guys seem to love to see them. So I thought, why not do another one for Halloween? Today, I'm gonna be doing a painting by an artist that I really, really admire, and I really, really love his work. He goes by Menton3 on Instagram. He's a painter, a musician, a tattoo artist and he's based in Chicago and his work is absolutely amazing. It's super spooky and super pretty for all you guys that love that kind of aesthetic and today I'm going to be transforming into one of his girls. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, even before Halloween, I was gonna do this regardless, but I figured Halloween would be really appropriate for this look. I feel like this is a makeup look that can go with a lot of different costumes if you just take the base of what I'm doing. I'm obviously doing an art recreation, so I'm gonna try to make myself look as much as possible like the painting, but you can take the base and the idea of what I'm doing and use it for a number of different costumes. So with all that being said, I'm going to jump straight into it, but before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have already and be sure to hit that bell button to be notified every time I upload. To start off, I'm going to prep my skin using the Laura Sanchez Martini Prep. I feel like this primer is really moisturizing and I've been using retinoids on my skin so I woke up with my face dry and peeling so I need all the moisture I can get. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention that I have glued down my eyebrows. I've blocked them out already. If you don't know how to do that and you want to learn, I have a whole separate video just dedicated to eyebrow blocking that you can watch by clicking right up here. Then because I've got these little pesky acne scars, I'm gonna go in with a yellow corrector. This is the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the color Yellow Corrector, and I'm just going to apply that, not a whole lot, just a little bit, over all my acne scarring. And I'm doing this because I'm going to be using a very, very pale foundation. And so I want to make sure that these little dark spots are well hidden. And then I'm just lightly tapping that out with my finger. So I've zoomed you out because I need to paint my chest area. I'm gonna start with that and then move on to my face. I'm gonna be using the same foundation on both areas. I'm going in with the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation in the color number one. But I'm also gonna be painting my neck all the way down to here with black. So I just really need to paint a little window of pale skin. Just going to dab that on. And I don't wanna get any on my bra. A good little trick is to take some paper and then just put it over and just kind of tuck it in like that. And that way you won't get any on your clothing. Now I'm just going to apply this all over my face as well. This foundation is super, super, super pale. It's great for looks like this. I think this might be the palest foundation I have actually. And it's buildable too, so you can kind of choose the amount of coverage you can get. I obviously want quite a bit of coverage because I'm changing my skin tone, and so I don't want any of my actual skin tone peeking through. Then for a bit of concealing, I'm going in with the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer in the color Porcelain. I'm going to use this just in the areas that I need a little extra help with the coverage. Not worried about my under eyes because it's going to be really dark under there, but I do want to cover up my brows. I'm blending that out with my sponge. Now to start the shading, I'm gonna use a pretty curious concoction of products. The shadows have a very specific undertone and I found just the right undertone when I mixed my Black Moon Cosmetics Hazel Lipstick with the foundation. So this is like a moss green lipstick, but when you mix it with the foundation, you get this weird sort of, I don't even know how to describe this color. It's a weird ass color. So I'm gonna start my shading with this. And I'm gonna use a flat brush so that I can be pretty precise with my application. And this is a limited edition lipstick, so it kind of pains me to use this, but it's fine. And I'm just following the reference picture for the shadows. I'm basically going to ignore the light source that's in front of me and create my own shadows. So in the end, it's going to look like I have a light coming from over here. I'm gonna use my little sponge to help when needed, but I also don't want to have a super blended out look. Like I still want to kind of see the brush strokes. That's another reason I'm using the brush for this is because you can definitely see the brush strokes in his painting. And so I want to mimic that. And this color just kind of goes around the edge of the shadow. So I'm definitely going to deepen the shadows in a little bit, but this is just kind of the very edge of the shadows have this weird greeny color. I'm also gonna shade 
my body with this color. I'm using the lipstick on its own to start intensifying those shadows. Crazy how this lipstick is like the perfect color for this. I'm gonna use a little bit of that pure lipstick only in certain areas of the face, specifically around the nose. I'm really going to thin out my nose. Her nose is super, super tiny and thin. Now I'm going to continue deepening the shadows and I'm going in with the Wet n Wild paint palette. This is the Smoky palette and I'm going to be taking this gray right here. I'm going to pat that on first. Hoping it doesn't clash with the green too much because the green has obviously very warm undertones and this gray has very cool undertones, but I think it'll work out. And this isn't the deepest color of the shadow just yet. I'm just kind of slowly building the intensity. She's got a big old forehead like me. That's why I chose to do this painting. And I think also because she reminds me a lot of Asajj Ventress from Star Wars and I freaking love Asajj, so. This Wet n Wild palette, they call it a paint palette, but it's a grease paint palette. If it was paint, it would be water activated. So it's not paint. I find the name a little misleading, but it's like a cream color palette. I don't know why they didn't call it that. And also taking that color onto the body. I'm repeating everything I'm doing on my face onto my body. Now I'm gonna grab the Makeup Forever color stick in the color M100. It's the black and I'm going to take it very, very lightly on my brush because it's quite dark. Oh, that's already too much. I'm gonna take the excess off on the back of my hand and I'm going to start really intensifying the shadows until they get as deep as I want them to be. And this is going to be my last color that I'm using in the shadows to really deepen them up. I think this is going to be the slowest process because it's getting all the shadows just right, trying to get them to match the painting as best I can. And you can see already the effect starting to form where I'm starting to look like a painting. Basically, when you create a new light source and you fake highlights and shadows, that's all you need to make yourself look like a painting or a piece of art. If you want to see another example of where I turned myself into like an oil painting, I did a video a while back that I'm going to link right up here if you want to watch it. That one I wasn't following a specific reference, I was just trying to make myself look like a painting and I really really like the way that one came out. So now I'm taking a much smaller flat synthetic brush so that I can do the little detailing around the nose with the shadow. There's a lot of like small shadows under the nose. The darkest shadow, I think of the entire painting, might be right here and the one next to the nose. Now I'm going to take a quick little break on shading and I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting. I'm taking the Mehron Illusion palette by Mimi Choi. I haven't used this palette yet. I'm really excited. It's got a row of creams, water activated colors, and powder colors. So this is a really nice nifty little palette and I'm going to be using this color right here. And I'm going to highlight my right cheekbone and cheek and I believe this is like the palest point of the face is this highlight right here. It's all the way to the lips. And I'm also going to highlight my chin a little bit on this jawline. Kind of jawline? That's not really the jawline, but right above the jawline. And then the very tip of the nose down the bridge. I think though because I'm stacking so many cream products on top of each other, this is just kind of slipping and sliding and kind of lifting the foundation a little bit. See, that's why I don't like using cream products that much because you can't layer them that well. There's always like a saturation point where you kind of can't stack anymore on top. I'm going to take that a little bit on my sponge just to do this area here. It does seem to apply really well with the sponge. I really want to make the nose seem super thin so I'm making sure the shading is just right where it needs to be. Under the nose as well she's got like these two little sections. Okay, I think this is all I can do with creams, so I'm gonna set this and then further tweak whatever I've got to tweak with powdered products. So I'm gonna take my RCA Mano color powder that's in this Anna Sui powder container. I'm gonna take it on a big old powder puff and then just powder the ever-living shit out of my face and body. Then once I've let that set a little bit, I'm just taking a big powder brush and 
pressing the powder into the skin and dusting off the excess. Now to further intensify some of the shadows, I'm going in with the Shroud Cosmetics, formerly known as Strobe Cosmetics, Divinity Palette. And I'm gonna take the color Bastet. This is like a weird grayish color, which I think will work really nice for the shadows. I'm gonna test it out here where the shadow's deepest. I think this is a good starting point. And at this point, you're probably tired of me doing shadows, but when simulating a painting like this, shadows are usually like the most important part to get right. Oh, and I think I might mix a little ocean. I don't know how to pronounce that name in English. In Portuguese, we call her Oshun. So I might mix a little bit of that into these shadows to bring out some of that warmth. So you can see I'm just intensifying the shadows in certain areas because I feel like I can be more precise with powder colors because they don't slip and slide. So where I apply it, I know it's going to stay. So that's why I like doing kind of the last stages of something using powder products because then I know it's not gonna budge afterwards. I ended up deepening this shadow a lot but I'm gonna leave it alone for now. I'm gonna do a little bit of highlighting and I'm gonna take the Lunatic Cosmetics Contour Palette Volume 1 and I'm gonna see if this color is bright enough. I might go in with a the white. There we go. To just pop out that highlight a little bit more. Over here as well on the chin. I'm also going to highlight down here just a little bit. Now I'm going to move on to eyes and lips and I'm going to be using the NYX Cosmetics Liquid Suede Lipstick in the color Jet Set. Now I don't know if this is eye safe, but this is a risk that I'm personally taking. Whenever you use products that aren't meant for your eye on your eye, you're taking a risk. Be warned. Don't do what I do. Do what I say. But I'm just taking this because it's the perfect color match to what she's got going on on her eyes and her lips. I'm going to make sure to get a really nice blend. The less product you have on your brush, the easier it is to blend. Hmm, although when I blend this out and it mixes with a foundation, it just looks like straight up blue and hers is a lot more purple. Hmm. I might mix in a bit of the Smashbox Always On Lipstick in the color Ultraviolet. I'm gonna see if that works. Although the consistency of this lipstick, it's dried down quite a bit. So I was avoiding using it, but I think the color matches a little bit more. Feeling almost like Beetlejuice right now. Now I'm gonna go in with an eyeshadow and I'm gonna make kind of a concoction because I don't have the exact shade that I need. I think I'm gonna start off with my Pat McGrath La Vion Rose palette, cause she fancy. And I'm just gonna take this purple right here cause it isn't too warm. It's also shimmery, so I don't know how that's gonna go. But I'm gonna take that around the edges. Ooh, she pigmented too, shit. This is way more pigmented than I thought it would be. Put that on my lid. Seriously feel like Beetlejuice right now. Then I'm gonna take the Milani Gilded Violet Palette and I'm gonna take the color Past Curfew, which I've swatched and it's quite powdery. There's a ton of kickback. So I'm gonna be pretty careful with this. Like I've never seen an eyeshadow have this much kickback. It's kind of crazy, but the color is gorgeous. And I'm gonna put that in my crease, just deepening certain areas real close to my bottom lash line as well. I'm going to take a really small pencil brush for this so that I can be precise with my application. I'm applying it in the inner part of my lid. Kind of doing like a halo eye, I guess. I'm applying it on the outside and inside corners and just leaving the center kind of blank. Just really deepening that crease. Then she's just got a very specific kind of highlight to her eyes. So I'm gonna try to go in with this color since it's right here. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna apply that down here on my lid. And then up here, she has kind of these two little highlights. And then same thing on the other side, but this time on the inner corner of the eye. Now I'm gonna take the Melt Gemini palette and I'm going in with the color Bonnie, which is the matte black. And I'm taking that on a little pencil brush so that I can be really precise with the application. Just gonna darken some areas of the eyes. Oh, this black is so dark. It's honestly the blackest eyeshadow ever made. 
Just doing this to give a little bit more depth to the eyes. I'm gonna go under the bottom lash line on the outer corner as well. And on this side, I'm gonna really darken the outer corner here. I'm also gonna take that shadow color and darken under the eye as well. And then I'm gonna go in with a black and do some precise detailing in the shadows. Like around my nostril, under the nose. Now I'm gonna take my Wolf Water Activated Face Paint and I'm going to draw the lines on the face. So I just need a couple drops of water and then taking it on a very, very thin and small liner brush. This is a paint brush, not a makeup brush. And I think I'm gonna start with the one on my forehead straight down the middle. That's kind of terrifying to do. Oh no. Caught on my hair. It's thicker, closer to my hairline. I'm gonna bring it further down. Then I'm gonna do the lines under the cheekbones. I'll start with this one. Ooh, that is not the right shape at all. Whoops. I slanted it too inwards. So I'm taking a wet Q-tip. Hopefully I'll be able to clean this up with minor damage. And again, the line is thicker towards the hairline. Made it a little too thick. And same thing over on this side. And then there's one last one coming from the lips down to the chin. And then this one up here on the forehead has two little dots. One on this side, one on this side. Now I'm gonna take the Jet Set lipstick and apply it on my lips. And I'm gonna really overdraw my lips. She's got a very and a sharp cupid's bow. Now I'm gonna take the Blackman Cosmetics Sleepwalker Liquid Lipstick and I'm gonna do some shading on the lips. This left side is pretty much all engulfed in black. Then I just wanna dust a tiny bit of this eyeshadow on top just so it matches the color really well to the eyes. And this is making me see that the eyes need to be darkened a little bit more, especially this left one. Now I'm going to take the Lunatic Cosmetics Contour Palette Volume 2 and use this dark gray just to intensify some of the shadows here and there. Yes, even more intensifying of the shadows. But now that I have like the black dark lips on my face, I can see what shadows really need to be intensified so that they kind of can keep up with the darkness and intensity of the lips. And now that I've got the lines, I can shade around them. And I'm gonna fill in this whole area here. And I'm gonna be using my Wolf Black Face Paint for that. I'm taking a flat synthetic brush and I'm going to paint my neck. She's wearing a collar, but I don't have a collar, so I'm going to paint said collar, because why not? Then I'm gonna move this little bolero jacket I've got going on. Oh, be careful when swishing around brush in your paint because you can get splatters the way I just did. Clean that up once I'm done, but I'm gonna go in and paint all of this in black. I want this line to be super crisp and defined. And it goes down. Then over here, I'm going to also draw in kind of extending the bra because hers comes up way higher than mine does. I'm gonna need a smaller brush for this. Now I'm gonna clean up the splatters. Now the last thing I've gotta do is the highlights on the collar. And for that, I'm going in with my white wolf face paint and I cleaned off this brush and I'm gonna use it, but I want it a lot drier than when I painted the black because I want it to separate like this so that I get texture from it. It's got like sections. So I guess I'll start here on the side. The next section. It's got like a little line dividing the sections. Then I'm just gonna take a little teeny tiny liner brush so that I can do kind of little details. Like some intense highlights here and there. Ooh, before I forget, I'm also gonna take that and highlight the lips. She's got two little highlights, one here and the other up here. There's a little too much white here, so I'm just taking some black back on that brush, doing the same thing over top the white to kind of erase certain areas. And while I let that dry, I'm just going to tie line my waterline. I'm using the NYX Jumbo Pencil in the color Black Bean. And I just really want to work it into the roots of my lashes. Make sure no skin color is peeking through. So now I'm going to put on my wig and my contacts and I'll be back to show you the finished look. Actually, for one last thing, I want to intensify these little highlights. So I'm taking the Ritual Defeat Eye Soot in the color Pixis. So I just want to make sure that I have those little points of light. I don't want them to disappear. 
And also now that I have the wig on, I'm noticing that her forehead is super, super narrow. It kind of like goes up in a point. So I'm gonna cheat that with some black face paint. I'm gonna take it and trace the sides of my forehead till I get the shape that I like. This wasn't a painting recreation, I wouldn't care so much, but like I said, I want to make myself look as close as possible to the original. And this is the finished look. I think this looks so dope. Menton's art is so amazing. I'm probably gonna recreate another one of his pieces in the future. This look is super simple. It's basically pale skin, purple eyes and lips with a few lines here and there. But I think the vibe and feel of the character is so cool and it's so appropriate for this season. With this wig, I kind of feel like I'm a mashup of a female Edward Scissorhands mixed in with a Saj Ventress. I'm also getting like female Cenobite vibes from Hellraiser. So I don't know, it's all things that I really like. So I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It did didn't take too long to do. Oh, and if you want to learn how I styled this wig, this is my Sandman wig. I have a full tutorial on how to style it up on my Patreon, so be sure to check that out if you're interested at patreon.com slash pompberry. And as you can see, I've taken out these sclera contacts because they are not comfortable, so I don't like wearing them for more than like 10 minutes tops. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you didn't think it was too random of a look. I always love doing these art recreations, so if you want to see me recreate an artist's work, please let me know who who you want to see down below. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much to all my patrons who support me and who made Pompoween possible. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for another Halloween tutorial. I'll see you then. Bye!